Yep. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. We've actually tried to record this podcast three times, but I'm having so much internet trouble uh, here in the Middle Sound area in Wilmington um, that I had Zane come over to the house. He's been nice enough. I've wasted about two evenings of his life so far trying to get the stupid podcast recorded for y'all, but uh, we had to do it because it's just a really cool topic, um, something that Zane's really good at, something that I would love to get better at. Um, and it's just a really great opportunity for some consistent fishing from now on through until the spring, really, oh, yeah. um, on a lot of redfish, to- uh, tog, or blackfish, and uh, and sheep's head, and with some other stuff mixed in as well. Black drum. Black drum, yeah. For sure. Um, and so it's just, we, we want to share that with y'all. Definitely, uh, Zane's a great guy to get out in the water with. All his information is going to be here um, on the show notes for the podcast and the YouTube video. Um, and if you're watching, you already see his Instagram here, which is falling tide underscore fishing. Um, but before we get into the podcast, go check out our Facebook group. It's Eastern Current Fishing. Um, and that is just a great place to connect with other listeners, with other fishermen, and ask questions, share your pictures of your fish that you've caught. Um, and there's even some pretty, there's some top secret fishing spots traded around in there I see every once in a while. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, there's not. There's not. But, um, but yes, and then also go check out our Patreon page. We put extra content on there um, uh, every once in a while for people that, that do really want to help support the podcast. Um, we do thank you all for that, and uh, that's enough of the pre-show stuff. But we'll get into uh, into this podcast. So um, first off, I, I already know it really well now because it's the yeah, third time we've done this. For sure. we but kind of give me your backstory. Like how how'd you get into fishing, um, and how has it kind of brought you to where you are now? So basically just grew up from a young age, uh, fishing around with my grandpa, yeah. um, parents, um, farm ponds and small creeks and rivers around the house. Um, kind of turned into a going out on solo missions by myself okay. by the age of 12 and uh, riding four wheelers around the woods, dangerous distances <laughs> for a 12 year old and trying to follow the white bass and striped bass up the Dan River. Yeah. Um, and then from there, uh, just fished all through high school and, and it ended up joining the Army um, when I was 19 and uh, kind of carried my fishing habit through them for a yeah, little bit. Sure. And they supported it for six years. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it's I, nice to have someone else supporting it. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll, they'll pay us. You just got to show up to work every now and again yeah. and then you can kind of shoot out and, and do whatever. Um, I fell in love with uh, saltwater fishing in Georgia. Um, that's me. Um, We're popular, you guys. You might hear a lot yeah, of uh... a lot of dings, <laughs> a lot of buzzes. Um, fell, fell in love with saltwater fishing um, in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, knew that from then on, I was going to figure out a way to eventually do it um, yeah. for for a living. Um, had a uh, parachute accident in 2015 that abruptly ended the military career yeah. and I was at a kind of at a at a loss and stuck trying to figure out what to do now right. I planned on doing that um for for a little while longer I I suppose and um kind of fell into this you know fell into the coast and yeah. and getting after it and and now I'm you know doing it for a living so that's awesome man that's cool you know you get some guides that are like butt hurt when there's another guide or there's new guides around not that you're a new guide or i'm a new guy but i'm just saying i i the way i look at it is if people want to be fishing guides oh, yeah, they should freaking do it it's the best job in the anyway. world there, and i couldn't imagine like you know you think about doing other things and like what else would i do like maybe make something in the industry but right. not, it wouldn't no. it always comes back to so i can fish more exactly so well. exactly <laughs> just man. do and it I, I want everyone out there that thinks they want to be a fishing guide to at least try it because i think it's the best job in the entire world and life's too short to sit there and like you know do something else so that hopefully you can fish more one day you yeah know? for sure uh, and don't get us wrong if you don't get to necessarily fish more when you're a fishing guy you just gonna oh, be out there more. yeah <laughs> i um i went out the other day and and caught a few trout and a buddy on the boat had a had a friend with me yeah. that was the day i saw you out there in the, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, in the secret spot anyway um so uh <laughs> He he was chomping back. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't eat, I haven't eaten. I've probably cleaned, what you know, definitely well over 100, 200 trout this year, and haven't eaten one yet. Right. I was like, let me <laughs> let me take some of that home, man. Definitely, so, yeah, for that, sure. That's that's funny, man. Yeah, I I uh, I haven't eaten 
I don't know if I've eaten. No, I did eat trout one night this this year. So yeah, far. I got some. I got some in the fridge right now. I feel so bad for those suckers, man. When I when I'm when I catch them, when I'm not on a guide trip. I'm You're like, like uh, I'm gonna let some go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, well, sweet. Well, that's a cool backstory, man, and and that's fun, man. I think uh, being a kid and getting to explore, and, and if every kid had the childhood, it sounds like you had, the world might be a better place, and people maybe more into fishing than other stuff. For so. sure, man. I I don't know if I would like think about it. I don't know if I don't have any kids, but when I do, I don't know if I'm gonna let. <laughs> it's just, a different place just, nowadays. Yeah, just thinking about just burning out of there at six o'clock in the morning and not coming back till like the next day is pretty sketchy we had like it was like three of buddies of mine who yeah. had four wheelers that were in riding distance of of the dan river and sometime around you know march time frame the striper yeah start um which as a story for another day they actually i think it was local guys from here um ended up wiping almost white gill net illegal gill netting in fresh water yeah um on the north carolina side of that um, wow so they were by the time I was in the military, those fish were gone. Mm. Um, so now there's some smaller fish stock. Those guys actually wound up going to going to prison. Man, that was a big big thing. Um, yeah. And uh, you know now now they're starting to come back. Brooknell had a had a big you know striper run. From what I can have heard from some older guys in that area, and just from what I remember as a kid, I mean that that fresh you know inland run up the, up the yeah. Um, Dan River and Stanton River, um, definitely not on the same scale as Weldon, but similar fishing for them, similar ways in the rocks and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was it was a tough thing. They're coming back though. Luckily, yeah. I went up there this year. My uh, did a little fishing with my stepdad, and we we followed some around, busting on little um. Uh, that's awesome peanut shad which yeah. is just nut you I cast love that. those little like cast master spoons <laughs> yeah. dude you can catch anything on them they're perfect them. man yeah. the spoon is like why do we ever make any other lures we just need a spoon just complicating the spoon is all it is exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly um, well that's sweet man it, it's it's sad it seems like everywhere you go there's a story of a, of a fishery that once was that is no longer so. it sucks and you know those were like you know you talk about catching big strike like I'm going I'm, t- I'm fishing in the Cape Fear here for for striper this time of year and on and you're talking about catching big fish where like right, it's right. not even the same like you no. could catch like you i mean like i have pictures of me just like holding fish Lapfuls in my lap fish, like yeah. this and it's just like not the same <laughs> but still fun but i know it's all relative though you know it's all relative I, I the cape fear used to be such a strong striper fishery i've heard obviously it was before our time but um that's crazy same with the duck hunting here apparently the duck hunting in downtown wilmington you know, yeah. 50, 60 years ago was absurd. But we're getting way on a little rabbit hole here. Yeah. So we're going to get into what we're, our main meat of this podcast here, um, which is going to be talking about nearshore fishing um, and fishing some of the nearshore structure, um, live bottom and ledges, as well as, as, as uh, man-made structure for redfish, sheep's head, black drum, tog, kind of the, the, the fish that you can catch, you know. Crab eaters. Crab eaters. You're, you're fishing crab and, and you're targeting these these fish from now on through to this spring um and and it's sometimes very productive days so very productive man yeah um, we'll take us let, let's talk let's start off kind of with um the areas that you like to look for these fish not i'm not saying your spots but like the the things that that these fish will hold on and we'll and, drop we'll drop the uh, <laughs> locations on the patreon yeah, <laughs> exactly no um so basically what you're looking for anytime you're targeting um something that's going to eat crabs, yep. shrimp, something like that, barnacles, is some, somewhere that crabs, shrimp, and barnacles are going to it's be. a good place to start. Good place to start. <laughs> so we're looking at um, any type of hard bottom, yeah. um, ledges. If you're marking den- like just hard density in, in your down scan and you're marking life there, it's always a good good spot to try. Right. Um, large structures near shore, all the ARs hold these, these fish throughout starting now in into early spring and yeah. i feel like my best sheep's head fishing early spring is done near shore yeah for sure um you know you have different scenarios that hold the different fish i like if i'm gonna go if i say like i'm gonna go target near shore redfish or black drum i'm gonna go for brown water i'm gonna go for something out out of the cape fear river yeah. down south near the shoals um, even out in front of uh, Lockwood Follies yeah. is, is really, really good this time of year. 
Um, locally, you for sure catch them. I was catching them the other day. I yeah. told you as many yeah. as you could possibly want. Um, slot redfish in deep water. Yeah. Um, and you know they'll they're once you get them those fish fired up anyway. I mean you can catch them on. I'm I've jigged them on metal and yeah and um just swim baits on like an ounce. Yeah. That's jig true. head. That's a fun bite, man. Red. Anything vertical though is just <laughs> yeah. it's fun to set the hook straight up and down. Yeah, they you can lean into them. That's what I uh, I wait all year so I can just <laughs> murk into a couple, um, for sure. Um, yeah, man. Just I think the the mo- best thing I can say is is learn to read read your electronics and trust your electronics and and um, you want to be marking life before you're fishing. Yeah. Um, and and just stick to the hard structure if you're targeting these fish for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's talk about this. Too. I think this is kind of important because a lot of people, when it when it, when it, you're talking, to, when you're like explaining where to fish in a creek and stuff like that, it's like, oh, it makes sense. Look for bends or oyster bars or, right. or creek mouths or whatnot. What would you say for someone that doesn't have any spots? And, and maybe they've got all the spots that are on your, you know, your grease charts and all that right. kind of stuff, but they want to kind of find some other stuff. Is there a productive way that you found? Like I, I've heard people say, when you're trolling for Spanish mackerel, have your down sc- scan on and look for spots like that. Like, how have you acquired? Besides, you know, there's usually shared spots between people, but acquired new spots necessarily. Right. Um, so off the beach, <clears throat> tro- trolling's a good way to do it. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're just gonna do it this year, I would say, um, like if you're doing it this time of year, yeah. trolling for Spanish might not be the most right, productive right, right. thing to do. Um, <clears throat> I would I would say. Don't fish one spot too long, especially if it's not productive. Yeah. Um, this time of year, you're going to be fishing these fish in large schools most of the time. Uh, the sheep's head, the black drum, the tog are going to be not by themselves. Right. They're all going to be in, a, in an area together. And it yeah. can be, <clears throat> especially on the larger structures, the the barges and tugs that are out there mm-hmm. the, um, at the ARs, I think a lot of, a lot of folks don't really fathom how large of an area you're fishing on the bottom you know you're sitting maybe on the mid middle of that structure well it says on the screen 105 foot barge if you're fishing the bow of that boat and not catching anything you know maybe if you're using an anchor let out a little anchor line right um turn you know you can always turn your wheel and And adjust swing where you're at drop back on the um spot lock and and fish that whole area yeah um, and, until you start getting the quality bites that you're yeah. looking for. How important do you feel like electronics are in, in this type of fishing? It's video fishing. It can be video fishing. You can do it. I, I say this now because I, I run a sim rad and I, I'm in the I'm all geeked out and zoom. Are you in. sitting there fishing, looking like at your screen like this? Not not as much. More so when I'm before I'm hitting that spot lock button. Like gotcha. I can got into and I think we have a um, common friend Elias. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and he's kind of been on my boat a couple times and kind of showed me a few things and yeah. just learning um hit um just from trial and error i can i can pretty much show you a redfish on the bottom or a black drum or you know i can't tell you that's a black drum that's a redfish but i can pick out the larger the, the fish, fish that are targetable the, fish and i can yeah. pick out the fish that are probably a school of sheep's head or probably a school of spade fish or what have you i've gotten to the point where i can that's pinfish those are bigger fish. Yeah. That might be one or two bigger fish. Um, and I think that's, I think use the, the electronics you have to your, have at your disposal. Don't be discouraged if you don't have those nicer electronics or those big screens. Um, I was doing it on a, on a boat that had a $200 Garmin from 12 years ago. So I, I mean, I was catching fish. I have pictures. A lot of the pictures I have up are, on the older boat, on the old boat. So yeah. it's, I mean, I was doing it and that's just a, a lot more trial and error. Yeah. Um, but that kind of makes it, keeps it interesting. Yeah, anyway. for sure. It takes some of the guessing out with the new electronics, but you can do it as yeah. long as you don't have the old, old school where it's just a couple of dots <laughs> yeah, and light up red and green. Yeah. The, <laughs> then you're probably yeah, good. Yeah. The, uh, uh, old, I kind of can't even think of the old system where it's just like beep. Yeah. I forget what that's called, but I couldn't do that. I would have to turn that thing off. Um, do you see many? This is just a random question. Do you see many small gag grouper this time of year? Yeah. Do you see some quality on the ledge, ones on the, on the ledges? ledges? Every now and again, you'll catch a quality one on a hunk of blue crab. Yeah. Um, I think there's there's some times where I've been doing this type of fishing this time of year, and and be like, that's a big fish. Like you can see the big fish, or like two or three big fish, 
and you're like, I can't get him to buy it. And those are probably grouper. If I would drop a bigger swim bait or maybe a live bit pinfish pin or something, something down there, I could probably get those bites. There's a few times where you can see fish, especially on the um, on the Simrad man, because you can see them moving under. You're like, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It can be frustrating. Are you running typically down scan or side scan or both at both. the same time? Both. Gotcha. Running both. What do you feel like is, is more of a game changer for that? Side scan. The side scan. Yeah. That's being able to see the relief. Yeah, being able to see it. Like being able to like... Drive around a ship and be like, oh, look, there's the ship. And there's see the there. ship. Yeah. Or there's clearly the ledge more so is, is like being able to... Like with the uh, jog feature on the um, Minn Kota with the with the puck. Yeah. Being able to like mark that ledge and then... And then go back and like put yourself on that ledge and yeah. then know exactly where that ledge continues. And and this is just not for this type of fishing, any type of near shore fishing. Being able to one hundred percent like on this side of the boat you're off the ledge, on this side of the boat you're above the ledge. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, if the current and just is, taking those questions out of there is, is what the electronics really help you do. For um, sure. But we'll get away from the electronics part because it can definitely be done without it. Um, well, let, let's let's kind of get a little more. Well, actually, before we get species specific, what do you think it'd be better to talk about how you like to rig and fish? Just generally fish for, fishing for it. Yeah, for let's sure. do that. Let's do that. So take us through your setup from like the, your rod reel all the way to your, you know, your. So, so I'm I'm normally running um, this time of year, fifteen to twenty pound braid. Okay. Um, and then I'm running that down to a thirty pound fluorocarbon leader. Um, I've been using the tsunami leader. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've used. That. I, I have used the, the big spools. Yeah, I like Dude, it. It's awesome. Quality. Um, Saves you some freaking money, money, too. Money, yeah. <laughs> so I'm running I'm running fluorocarbon leader. I wouldn't suggest running mono. You're fishing in structure. You want something that's going to have that abrasion resistance. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can pick your brand. I picked the Tsunami just because it's 25% the price of yeah. the Seaguar or yeah, something like that. Definitely. Um, I'm running that straight down to a, uh, to a first flight jig mm -hmm. um either the uh bottom sweeper like version um or the uh nc treat it's like a swing jig on a pendulum um and uh some something like that and i'm fishing crustacean only so preferably you know fiddler crabs or the mud fiddler crabs the bigger tougher right, crabs right. mud crabs is i would say hands down the best bait you can use this time of year um when it comes to running trips, it, it's a little more, I'm not, you know, you can't go out there and dig mud crabs right, or right. flip rock for everybody. Um, so the, my alternative and it works well is, uh, is going to be, you know, cut up blue crab. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's one thing I've thought about. And I've tried on a couple of trips to go catch mud crabs for trips. It's just too much work. It you can't really go. Is. I mean, it's hard enough to get enough mud crabs for me. Right. Um, to go out and, take four people or three people out yeah. flipping rock is just not you'd not, have to have a mud crab guy you have to have <laughs> you have to have a guy man um i have a i have a little bit of a a, a Do you have crabs i have some crabs man <laughs> um it's, it's a it's a growing problem no i have a i have like a couple totes that i keep some mud in and yeah if i go out and get a bunch of them and then yeah i feel like they um they eat they'll eat bread um really yeah they'll eat bread and um i, I i'll toss like um Every now and again, like a small chunk of me, I, I try not to like have a garbage disposal back right, there, right. just enough to keep them going. More so, just keeping enough mud I've found in the tote that they can make a hole. Oh, cool. It's kind of what made they Sweet. don't like to be exposed. They like to, and then you just kind of spray that every now and again. Yeah, keeps them alive. But that's awesome. How long have you been able to keep them alive like that? Surprisingly long, man. Really? Like sometimes I, I'll, especially in the colder months, like especially right now, if you can get a, if you go out and. There's a few spots down the river that you can hop out and kind of find them, not fully out of their hole, but you can look in there and, and, dig, and them dig them out, and um, it can go pretty quick. And if I go out and get, you know, sometimes you'll end up with a bucket full, and you're like, oh, well, I don't need this many. I'll put them in there, and then I'll go trout fishing or or, or whatever, looking for redfish schools for a week, and then you're like, what if those crabs are and like they're still kicking, man? Really? Like, yeah, That's yeah, awesome. I think it slows. I think that cold weather really slows, slows the down. metabolism down, and um, they. They last pretty long. The, the blue crabs will stay alive in, in when it's cold like this in a cooler for five or six days. Really? Yeah. That's man. awesome. Yeah. I remember on one of the, either the first or second recording that we tried, yeah. um, you were talking about how important it is to, to get live blue crabs instead of, you know, at, you're the dead ones at, at, from the CBU or whatever. Absolutely. So go into that a little bit. Absolutely, man. If you're going to 
if you're going to fish with blue crab, if you're going to take the time to go out um, and, and do this style of fishing, burn the time it takes to get out there and figure it out and, and get into the big numbers of right. fish like, like we're talking about, fresh bait is, is key, man. If you, if you go, it's, it's $10 for a dozen um, mixed blue crab, and I feel like a dozen will do you for per And person. you can get the live ones at the at, at the at sea view sea view crab um surf city crab all wow. the all the they have live ones. i didn't know that that's awesome yeah you go in there and you actually i have bought live ones before yeah. i just forgot that they were live, yeah, they're live they'll come man. in a brown bag a lot of times yeah they like, put it they'll brand this brown bag money man <laughs> yeah, they, they um they they put them in there and and i normally take I, I leave them in that brown bag yeah um have a little bit of ice I'll, they'll they'll give you some ice man um put it in a cooler and uh and then you're good to go. You can spray a little water in there with your salt, raw, yeah. raw water wash down if you'd like. But normally you can, um, they're, they're good to go. I would say if you have a dead one, a lot of times what I'll do instead versus fishing it, if it's that, that meat turns really quickly. If you have them die, you know, you, you shake the crab and the legs flop with no life. You know, if a lot, a live, live blue crab will have, they'll have tension in their legs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just cut them up where I'm fishing, toss them in as chum, um, and I guess that'll uh, roll me into the next thing. If you, if you're going to be fishing in the colder water for these yeah. fish, I chum heavily. Yeah. Um, using blue crab, oyster, shrimp, even if um, you know when the water gets cool enough, end of February, late January, drops into that you know, frigid 50 degree water right. near shore. Um, you can, you can, as long as the, the pinfish and the, and the tiny five inch black sea yeah. bass and ring tails have moved out of that area. Chumming can be the most okay. effective way to, to target these Sweet. fish for sure. So to explain your, your process of chumming, cause for a lot of people and for myself, when you first explained that, I was thinking, you know, ch- chum bag tied off to the stern of your boat, but are you actually dropping that chum bag down to so, the bottom? So if I'm going to, especially targeting the tog which i i find hold on the ledges a lot more than you know you'll you'll catch all four of these species fishing one spot for 100 for sure um you'll see that certain areas are going to hold different yeah, types yeah. of fish i think the smaller rubble um structure holds much more black drum you, okay. you'll catch the black drum on that like you know concrete rubble right. concrete pipe on all the all the near shore um reefs pretty much have a little bit of concrete yeah. um thrown out there um those are going to hold your red fish black drum something that likes to nose up in a rock and get grab a, grab a whole crab or whatever yeah. that's going to be your crab habitat um if i'm fishing a ledge especially if i can get if i can find an area where there's a big long ledge and then there's going to be current moving down that ledge which i think is what creates these scenarios anyway for these fish to stack on up on them i'll uh I'll pull up to a pretty central spot on that thing, maybe the biggest relief I can find or whatever makes me feel happy for whatever reason. Right, right, right. I'll um, put the spot lock on. You know, I, I try to make my little concoction at the boat ramp, but um, you can you actually, um, a friend of mine, uh, Jason, he, uh, the first couple times that we were kind of chumming and figuring yeah. this thing out together, he's a, a guy um, um, who kind of, t- he taught me a lot about sheep's head fishing and, 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 and all that. And he uses a minnow trap. He actually takes a minnow trap out there, and and he'll we'll we'll crush it up and put it in there, and he'll drop the minnow a trap. Little safeguard for your all your stuff. Yeah, and you know you get some pinfish in there too if you want. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, so uh, I personally use a I have a big hardy chum bag, yeah. and I'll take it at the dock before I'm hopping on the boat, and I'll smack up oysters, some blue crabs that I've purchased for yeah. bait. A shrimp blend and you get a good little um probably be good if you cooked it any, honestly um <laughs> like a soupy snotty like bag of like chunked up oyster and crabs and um, i'll throw a big hunk of lead in there and then what i'm doing is i'm lowering that all the way to the bottom okay and and um you'll uh you'll if, if you'll know right away if that was the wrong decision because you'll get a huge cloud of pinfish underneath you and that's when it's time to go further out or, or I'm sorry, further in. Further rather. in yeah, yeah. Um, this time of year, if you're getting the pinfish, you want to be, you want to be inside of the pinfish. It's like a, it's a chess game you're playing where the schools of sheep's head are going to be somewhere here. The big clouds of, of 
pinfish, you know, the tolerable water temperature for those right, are right. going to be a little different than that larger, um, more hardy sheep's head. But I'll, um, <clears throat> I'll shake the chum bag, you know, give it a good blend, and you'll see the, <laughs> the stuff just getting carried out and drop it all the way to the bottom. And then I'll just kind of fish a little bit, but most of the time you're just waiting to see what that's going to bring in. And if you're watching the down, um, down scan, you'll start to see the life you know, congregate around, congregate around cool. where you're chumming and um and then you know give her a go drop her drop some crab down and see what's down there well what's the quickest you've like dropped to your chum bag and have you dropped down to your chum bag after a few minutes and just hooked a fish immediately? oh man it gets if there's if you're in an area that's hat holding like a bunch of crab eaters like that's one thing especially a redfish man like it, they're come, it they're course. gonna come to that thing like when, when, we're at, when i saw you the other day we were i mean you're dropping. It's it's. Were y'all chumming when I saw that? No, we you didn't. Weren't. I didn't bring that because it, it sounds like you didn't need it. <laughs> yeah, it had, it had been a little cold and um, or I'm sorry, a little warm, and, the, yeah. and they're still for sure. Um, uh, ring doorbell. <laughs> sorry, Turn you're good. Off. You're good. Um, it had been a little, been a little warm. The water temperature is still very warm for this time of year. Yeah. And there's and there's still some trash fish around, so we did we chose not to chum. It paid off, <laughs> but um, the as far as the redfish goes, they're gonna find that crab man. And and the other, you know, they're that, these fish are not necessarily starving, but they're this time of year it starts to get scarce. The 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 food that they're used to having, the big flush of shrimp is pretty much over. Um, I would say the uh, the the blue crabs are still around, but there's not many sheep's head and tall talk there is a few that can eat they smash a whole right, blue right. crab but most of the time they're feeding on those little peelers and yeah um smaller smaller crabs for and, sure and stuff like that so when you drop a big hunk of fresh blue crab it normally doesn't take long for them to yeah smell yeah. that thing out for sure definitely well well let's talk about this like i think one of the big questions when near shore fishing is like when i'm when you're fishing in a creek for redfish or or whatnot or fishing a dock or whatnot for sheep's head you know pretty quickly, like, all right, I should move. I should stay here. Like, what keeps you in a spot, and what tells you, all right, I need to go ahead and move? So, so trash fish. If, yeah. If we, you'll, if you're, you'll know. You, you know, you'll know what a what a sheep's head hit feels like, and what I mean, you'll you'll figure it out. You're gonna get thumped if it's a good fish. And now you will. Don't don't get me wrong. If if you're not used to doing this yeah. type of fishing, you're gonna lose. Like you're going to for sure. I mean, I would say one in five. If you if you catch one in five sheep's head or, or tog that that bite your bait, you're doing really good, man. Yeah. Like they're 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 very teethy, um, bony mouths. The tog have really the only way you hook the tog well is by missing them and then catching that big rubber lip that they have. <laughs> um, is is pretty much it. So trash moves me, man, for sure. If I if I get there and and start, you, it'll when you're dropping those with that bait, you, if you're feeling if you're feeling pecks and 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 and, and little stuff on yeah. the way machine down, gun bites on, on the yeah. way down, just like reel it up, take it for what it is. It, it can be tough too, man, because you know there's also like I'm not saying because there's pinfish there, there's, there's not, not sheep's head. Yeah. I mean, there's sheep's head in shore all summer, and there's pinfish in shore all summer, and there's they're living there's, together out there. They're living together, yeah. but it's 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 not productive. It's, you're not you're not going to be able to fish that bait effectively while there's a thousand. It's essentially fish. you need to keep it down there long enough for a for quality that, fish yeah, to find it for yeah. sure. And and you'll know and you'll know. I mean, you'll, you once you once you figure yeah. it out, there's it can get silly, man. And and if you can get away from the trash, even if it means not even necessarily blasting to another AR. Just yeah, what from, is a move? Like, yeah, is so, it 10, 15 feet? So a move or is it... can be with the trolling motor, and a move can be running 50. You know, yeah. it's, it's not, it's, um, I would say, I for sure, like, if I'm going to go out and fish um, a, a big structure, um, I'm going to fish that whole thing. Whether or not, like, if I drop down and I'm chumming there, and I get this madness of pinfish, well, for me, that tells me that, well, all the pinfish that are on that giant structure are now where I was just chumming. If you pick up and... Um, you know, move up, up the, up the That's reef. Very true. You know, now you're like, you're golden. And, and I've even talked about the guy I was talking about, uh, <clears throat> chumming with or figuring that out together. Um, 
we've even talked about taking an anchor buoy and just tying our chum basket off and then yeah. going away and fishing from, <laughs> fishing that's, away that's from awesome. which would be kind of counterproductive. I've done that with albacore. Really? A handful of crushed up Cheez-Its and throw it out in the bird and start diving on it. <laughs> we did it up in Cape Lookout one time. We heard of, we heard it worked and we just wanted to try it. And the, and the, and the boats came to the bird? No, no. Oh. The oh. boats went to the birds and we went to the albacore. <laughs> so it's, good, it's, a, it's a fun trick. Too. Yeah, that, that's, I'll have to try that. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd work good off out of the right swim. Right <laughs> it just, would, man. It would be them. great. Uh, if you want to really get them going, just buy one of those frozen pay, blocks. Of, pay, uh, pay some kid in a John boat to be out there <laughs> shoving exactly. cheese and stuff. Just idling around, throwing them out the back of the boat. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Um, well, take me through how you like to fish these jigs. And, right. and there's some different jigs here. How what what the difference is and how you rig them and how you fish them. All right. So I guess we'll go through both over the different ones. Um, so this is going to be the swing jig or the NC treat jig that, yeah. that Gene makes. Um, these are... <clears throat> quality hooks and, and can, you can pick those up locally correct absolutely yeah. all the local tackle shops carry them you can reach out to gene firstflightlures.com yeah. or you can hit him up on instagram and he'll get them he's pretty quick i know he's with these um he's having a hard time finding hooks and he's a stickler so he wants the right he way wants that he, hook. Yeah, he, he's very he's very particular on how he makes it which make is what makes him good yeah it yeah. makes him quality i never have failures with these things and you're put i mean most of the time, I'm locking the drag down, and you're not Definitely. having these pull out. Or, yeah, that's you know, a stout hook on even that little, little. Blade. I've caught with this exact, the, with the quarter ounce, this hook, I've caught 40 inch redfish, wow. 100%. So, wow. um, with these, the way I'm fishing them is, is the same. Um, mm-hmm. You're able to, the, the, the good thing about these jigs, man, is, is the fact that when, when it, articulates like this i think it helps me get it unsnagged um you you'll you'll fish you'll wear the you'll wear these hooks dull before you lose this jig yeah most of the time um basically vertical is the only way to fish these things effectively i feel okay. when you're fishing for sheep's head tog um anything that's gonna bite a bait and not just suck it in to the back of their throat like mm-hmm. a red fit like Redfish, black drum, like they're gonna eat. They're just gonna, right. Right, right, they're right. gonna put put it back in the crushers, and then it's up to you to set the hook. But um, when you're fishing these, I like to fish them straight up and down. And I what I tell my clients is to try to hold that jig on the bottom without it touching the bottom. So yeah. you're basically able to reel down to the water, hold that rod tip, you know, five or six inches above the top of the water, and just ease that jig down on the bottom, fill the knock on the bottom and then which kind of hold it up to where you're able to feel any type of move and and then you will see like a lot of times especially fishing like that you'll see your jig just kind of swim away and that's when you know to kind of reel down feel the pressure and yeah, lean, yeah. lean into them for sure heck yeah that, that's sweet it's <clears> funny <throat> i think we talked about this on one of the podcasts now it's going to start feeling like one of the practice runs what have we covered what we not yeah, I'm going to be like, what if we cover, what if we not? But sitting there, sheep's head fishing in shallower water, and you don't feel a bite sometimes. You just yeah. see your lines start swimming to the side. And Especially you fishing the pilings, man, because they're just naturally suspended on those pilings right. anyway. So a lot of times when people are fishing um, inshore for sheep's head, a lot of people are fishing below the, where the sheep's head yeah. are. You know, you're fishing down, and they'll, they'll see that crab or whatever you're fishing ease down that pile, and they'll go down to get it. And most of the time, they're just going back to their – Right. where they were they're not really rising up they're just kind of going back to where they were chilling before yeah. and um yeah they'll they'll get you that way definitely the tog it's kind of like the, the trademark bite of, of a big tog for me anyway is seeing that line not necessarily move um horizontal but vertical yeah. you'll see like you'll you'll see you you'll just get some slack in your line out of nowhere and you'll reel down and, and have a fish you wow. know What's uh? Tell me this. What's your best? That's become my new phrase on this podcast. Yeah. Tell me this. I don't tell know. Why me, I, keep, I hate when I keep the, saying the same thing. Just tell me this, man. Um, but what's been your best? What's your best day on talk? What's the most talk you've caught in one day? Um, we've had to. We've gotten to the point where we've just started throwing them back. Really? Um, yeah, for sure. There, you can look and if you look back, um, I think so. What was the duck hunt year? Um, two thousand seventeen. Yeah, it was when it froze and it was. Yeah, really what good. was that year? Oh, does that mean good tog fishing if you get a big freeze? Yeah. It means dead trout, but go catch the tog. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that was five years ago, four years ago. Was it that long ago? It might, I don't know, man. I don't know. Whenever there was dead tr- trout and shit downtown, yeah. um, it was silly. Like really? It was like 
you, you're pulling up, you're not chumming, you're just dropping frozen shrimp down at the at the um, first AR you can get to, and it's just like every drop. I mean, and wow. you're not necessarily catching those big quality yeah, but fish every awesome. drop, but you're catching tog every drop. And, and North Carolina doesn't have any regular. I mean, so you could keep you can keep all as keep many all as you of them. Want. I mean, it was it was to the I was trying. It got to the point where I was like eating them a bunch of different ways, <laughs> and it was just every day I was going out and, and just Catching slaying. Time. Um, I will say the the best way to eat them I found is is ceviche. 100%, really, one hundred percent. I love ceviche, and it's always good to know good ceviche. Fish. Um, d- dude, take it off the skin. Obviously, you want to cut against the grain. A um, little bit of onion, pico, um, cilantro, and um, I do grapefruit and yeah. lemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, grapefruit's uh, great in, in there. And, and and throw that in the fridge for two hours, and then take it out and just. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, man! I usually every summer do quite a bit of ceviche. I yeah, I think yeah, I didn't make it once this summer. Have you tried the Spanish time. ceviche? I've had Spanish sashimi, which is delicious. How was that? It is it was so good? dude. I could eat ten Spanish raw like that. It's, it is way better raw than than cooked. Could, than I don't cooked. like yeah, it I don't cooked. like it cooked at all. Um, raw. Yeah. I mean, it tastes like. I mean, it, it's delicious raw. The the fir- the way that Just that happened. Keeping it cold. Yeah, cut their gills as soon as you catch them and put them on ice. And keep it cold slushy. and cut it and, and ice go. Ice slushy. Yeah, just yep. yeah, ice slushy. And um, like you said, cut with the grain and cut the skin off of it. And, man, it was good. We caught a bunch in Louisiana one time. Or my, my one of my roommates did. He's from Florida. He had another guy from Florida. And they thought they were a Sarah mackerel. Because they yeah. don't really see many Spanish where yeah. he is down there. He's right, like, which are really looking good, really good. Yeah, and so they, yeah. they killed him. And brought them back, and I got home. And they had a bunch of sashimi laid out, like it's Sarah mackerel. And then they showed me a picture, like that's a Spanish mackerel, and it was it was delicious. That's awesome. So I mean, obviously you can't eat forty Spanish like that. It, it gets a little old, but <laughs> yeah, maybe no, you could. I have it's a, a lot of work to eat it. Eat them. I have a, a buddy of mine in, in St. Augustine um, who actually he's the one that told me to do it um, ceviche. Really? So, yeah. He he um he he came he he was visiting locally and and um. I had him out on the boat, and uh, you know we caught a few, and and I, I was just like, well, we I normally just chunk them back; they're fun to catch, or, or if you know someone that wants some, but I, yeah. I normally, you know, you, you got a bunch, I got a bunch of sheep's head and stuff, and <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, he was like, man, you really should try these ceviche. So he took them back, and he did them, did them good, and and ate them with uh, just tortilla chips with the so good. Oh, dude, I, I was. <laughs> I didn't throw many Spanish bags this year because of that. I, I tried to tell all the clients, like, don't take these home and fry them. Like, right. Yeah, for take sure. Take them home and do a ceviche. That's yeah. awesome. I, I, man, so many fish are good that way. Redfish and... Have you uh, have you done redfish? I've done redfish that way. Uh, I've done... I haven't done trout, but I've done flounder ceviche, which is really good. See, I, had some, I had some flounder sushi from a local. Um, Mess the, you up? Yeah, it just did hit me wrong, man. Yeah. Was, I don't, I don't want to call anybody out but it was <laughs> it was not the uh it was it was just i maybe just i wasn't expecting to have the flounder there and i was like you know that's, that looks very local and yeah. popped it in and it was just uh, it was not good no not the best um well that's cool man the tog so many people don't even realize we have tog here i've shown i've came back to trails in um so many times with just like a sack i try to just I try to when I do this type of fishing. I think we had mentioned it before. I, I don't. I take a cooler and the coolers for the bait. Yeah. And then I'll have a live well, and I'll try to just to not get too stingy. I feel like I just try to make the live well to where I can't put any more fish in the live well, yeah. and then like okay, we're good. Yeah. Um, and I've went back and just ripping tog out of the live well, and people are like, "What is that a grouper?" You know, like these are dudes <laughs> that I see there all the time right. fishing, but most of the time. Yeah, like you said, if people normally near shore fish in in the summertime and stuff like that, and for some reason there's a um, preconceived notion that oh it dies out this time of year, you got to run. It gets better. It gets much better. Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't <laughs> yeah, we uh, <laughs> give him a call and book a trip if you want to see if it gets. Any yeah, better. I, I'll let yeah see see that way. Maybe not. Um, <clears throat> man, that's cool. So, w- would you say that you stumble into? All of the, the let's say let's just call them near shore game fish, crab um, eaters. Let's crab, call them crab, crab eaters. eaters yeah. Would you say you stumbled into all the crab eaters on like the same drop? Like you're not like trying to fish the upside of the ledge for the redfish and the downside of the ledge for the tog. Can you get that specific? For sure. I don't know if it would be necessarily that specific per one spot. Um, you will definitely 
um, especially the black drum. If you're catching black drum, you're probably gonna catch redfish too. When you're when you're fishing near shore, I have um, another buddy of mine who makes a uh, who makes a good like near shore jig arrowhead tackle company. He's a local guy. Oh, cool. At Monkey Junction. He he and he gets all crazy with the sparkly paint colors yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. But it's I don't know if that matters, but. It, I like them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and I just put a um, if I if I'm in an area where I'm going to catch where I think there's redfish. If I catch one or two redfish on crab, I'll normally start jigging, yeah. and I'll take those jigs um, um, and just slow pitch to where you're just like you're you're kind of like jerk jerk jerk, and then just kind of feed like serving it up to them on a on a platter, just yeah. easing it back down. And you can't use too much procure if you're. Uh, if you're doing that type of thing, especially yeah. the colder it gets, I think they're um, less reactive, you know, just like reaction striking more so like they're smelling Procure. Yeah. There's a thing that looks like it would be Good something that smells like Procure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then they smack it, man. So if uh, if you're, that would say, that would be my way of targeting. You said that was with a slow pitch, Jake? Uh, well, I'm saying slow oh, jigging. S- oh, slow I, jigging. See, I see so many people jigging near shore and they're doing the whole like pop 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 like you're targeting flounder you're trying to get that like reaction right, right. i would say more slow so for me i'm using those arrowhead and you can get those arrowhead i think arrowhead tackle.com or he's got them locally too yeah cv crab actually carries them oh sweet right <laughs> um i think island tackles carry them now um i think he's maybe talking with the intercoaster guys he's, he's just kind of doing this now but um it's a big hunky near shore jig man it's just something that's pretty hard to come by I mean, yeah you definitely. Know, yeah so um i'm i'm slow jigging the that with a zeman. and i'm using the big zeman um fluke normally i like the fluke um you can use a swim bait i, th- yeah. I like the i think that like when you're easing it i think a swim bait um when you're jigging quickly or reeling is a good option i think when i'm like doing that thing where i, I basically jig up and then just ease it down to them um, I think that little two split tail just, it just, just down. I think it might does the is the final. it would get you. So you oh know yeah, I, I would yeah. eat it for sure. Yeah. Um, and that's 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 how I target redfish. If I start catching them, on when crab, you say big, before I forget, what is what is big to you for, for brother for the for the for that jig? You said the big Z man. I'm sorry, seven inch. Seven inch. Okay. I'm so, using the seven inch yep. and sometimes even the five inch. Um, and about about an ounce, you know, you, you can yeah. go too heavy to where it's gonna fall like this. Yeah, you want to kind of get perfect where that buoyant Z-man is gonna hold it pretty much parallel, yeah. and you can kind of play with it beside the boat and see how it's gonna fall. Right, and then that's how you kind of want to serve it up to them, kind of like a f- flickering. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, bait fish. Um, One and- thing I've I've learned, I learned this through Elias, um, just because my near shore targeting of crab eating fish and, and game fish and whatnot is very minimal. But go, like upsizing your bait is huge because it, it gets away from the, the trash fish yep. and, and it and it still you'll still get the bites from the other fish and he's he's sent me pictures and videos of like big speckled trout out there on some of the ARs and stuff. I've too, never jigging. caught the speckled trout. Yeah. I've I've definitely caught very I've caught gray trout on 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 swim baits longer than your computers. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like just like you can't get there, there's like um I forget the. He, I think he uses Hobie or he has his own. Um, yeah, he's got his own shed. Mm-hmm. But um, there's there's one that's a it's a jerk or it's a fluke style, but it's pre rigged. I think it's meant for like bombing for big snook and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I've used those before, just jigging out there. And you're, I mean, you're using a fluke looking thing that's just like silly looking, like an eel yeah. length, and you're catching twenty five inch gray trout. Yeah. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> yeah, it's a, it gets pretty. Pretty funny, but I guess back to uh, yeah targeting yeah. with with the with the crab. Um, I I feel like like I said before the the tog are going to be holding on those ledges more so the numbers of tog. If you're just getting into this and you don't want to be and you're just saying like I want to go near shore, I want to catch some sheep's head, I want to catch some tog. Yeah. I want to I want to do what we're talking about here. I would first start at the big structures. Um, this time of year is when it's just getting good. You yeah. know, it's peop- it's it's getting to the point where that trash fish is moving out. I would um I would I would get you some a variety of baits uh, is what I, I would I would say you can't have and I've definitely had times especially as it gets colder mm-hmm. um, that that they'll only eat shrimp you know fresh caught or shell on fresh yeah. head on whole shrimp is is kind of what gets the job done with the sheep's head for some reason they they have a 
time where they switch from I like to think maybe that's what they're eating out there is right, shrimp, or right. maybe they're eating something more like that. Um, and you know, doing it that way. If if you want to get specific, I I definitely find the sheep's head on the big structures, and sometimes they'll even suspend over top of the big structures. Um, and like I said, for the for the black drum and redfish, the rubble piles, the yeah, yeah. reef balls, stuff like that is what's going to hold those fish. Definitely. Yeah. Um, is so let's let's do this to just for for the local listeners. Um, you can get your crab at Sea View. Your sea live view crab. crab. Your big unless, fresh unless shrimp. they would only have a few of them, then you got you got to leave something. Yeah. yeah. Um, your your fresh shrimp. Where where's your best recommendation? If you don't mind me sh- asking, you don't have I, to share it. Buy your fresh shrimp from a fish house, man. Yeah. Um, and I think Green Volup carries fresh shrimp yeah. all pretty much all winter. Uh-huh. Um, Sea View crab, all the pretty much I think Mott's Channel uh-huh. is gonna have your fresh shrimp, and it's like. I think some of them do the previously frozen yeah. head on. That's fine. Just not you don't want the cup of cup of shrimp, right, you right, know. Right. Um, I think that's when you take it out and it's already pink. Oh yeah, it's already I, pink. It's not fresh. <laughs> I, I do fish that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like you're gonna you're gonna get the less quality bites. I think they. I don't know if they can tell or not. Maybe it's in maybe maybe I'm more specific than the fish are. Well, but, I mean that. Someone that, that fishes a lot is going to know better than someone that just goes and buys a cup of shrimp. And you know what I mean? Like, I, I think I think um, I've for sure seen it pan out inshore with redfish in the winter time, like fishing docks. I've definitely seen side by side the fresh shrimp get eating more more than the the cup of shrimp or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And definitely with the crab, you will not with once a blue crab starts turning. And it gets that really soft, mushy, and it starts smelling. Um, you're not gonna. It's not gonna. You're not gonna get the bite that you're looking for. Maybe a black drum will eat it. Yeah. Just because they're big and stinky anyway. Well, I th- you think about uh, like now that you say that, like in the winter time, there'll be a big school of redfish in the area. I'll be fishing it, and I'll see a dead blue crab in the area. Sometimes I know you've probably seen this too. For sure. Yeah. And and it's probably been there. For, it's untouched. You know what I mean? But if you threw a blue crab, a fresh blue uh, crab, you into one in half. Or, yeah, they would eat. They it, would yeah. crush it. You know? Yeah, I think I think they they know they they know what dinner smells like, and it ain't a stink, yeah. it ain't a stinky, uh, right, right, um, rotten blue crab. Um, so I think I think fresh bait is is key when you're doing this type of thing. You might still get bites on the on the um, on the burnt ones, but it, it'll be not the quality. Yeah. Bite and if you're gonna go out there and spend the time doing it, why why not? I put I try to the best. I try to take the the I try to take the best biggest variety. You know. You, you, if this, I think we mentioned it last time. This time of year, this type of fishing, bait fishing, I love because you you can eat your bait. Like if you go get, <laughs> yeah, that's true. If you go get a pound and a half <laughs> of fresh head-on shrimp and a couple dozen blue crab and go out and go fishing. If you don't catch any fish, you for sure still have dinner when you get home. <laughs> you're already providing so, yeah, yourself. You're providing something unless you're yourself. fishing in the trash fish. Then yeah, you yeah, it can get it can get a little. Ch- that's I I would I, I can't say this enough if you're if you're getting that really machine gun yeah. bite just go Please. fish somewhere like you would be better off you'd be better off finding like even on the big structures i'll find you'd be better off moving away from that finding you like a little bit of relief somewhere finding you a rubble pile or a natural occurring limestone bottom um and fishing that for and for maybe one or two quality bites versus yeah, sure. That giant barge in the middle of the ocean is gonna have some sheep's head on it, undeniably. Yeah. Um, I think being able to get that bite, being able to, because when they start swarming, man, like there's, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> the ringtails, especially, dude, they'll get all the way up to the boat, man. They'll, you'll like if you're fishing crab for those ringtails, like all, you'll, I've have, I've, ha- I have nicks in the side of my boat from clients setting the hook on a, in sixty feet of water on a on a ringtail that's. Two, three, four feet under oh the water, gosh. and they'll they'll set the hook, and just you hear like clunk. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I I would say move away from the trash fish. Find that quality bite. Yeah. It, it, it's it's there. You just gotta fish through it, and then it'll. I've had days when I go out there, I'll leave, I'll bust the inlet at seven o'clock, and I'm fishing until ten before I catch the first. You know quality fish and then from then on out you know you're catching them until you're ready to go home yeah it um, takes some moving around and trying different you, stuff and you, you gotta you gotta be willing to just like anything man yeah. you gotta be willing to you can't 
the you get the, you got to fish where the fish are. You know, you yeah. got to fish where yeah. they're gonna eat. You know, you can't. Do you find it the same way this time of year as like if you find a school of redfish in a creek to where if you caught them there last week, you can probably go back there the next week and catch if them you the exact find, spot? If you find, especially the black drum, man. Okay. If you find a spot, if you find, um, and man, a lot of times with the black drum, you'll you'll get them on the um, on the live bottom, and you'll get them there, and they'll be you'll you won't be catching them. 30 yards from where your spot is, but you'll mark them and they just find a thing they like, man. And they're just, whether they're wintering over and that's more so for the stuff in tight, you know, yeah, you, your, yeah. your rocks and, um, a little, maybe even ledges inside of the, of, the, of most of the ARs, you know, if you find a good school of black drum, they're going to be there. You can go catch Sweet. them. Yeah. You know? And, and, and as far as the, um, the sheep's head and, and tall tog, I think, if you find a spot that's that's productive, um, I believe that spot will be productive throughout the winter, whether or not it's productive every day. Um, and, I, and I think the winds and currents affect it just like right, um, any right. other thing, maybe less than it would <clears throat> trout in a, in a creek or trout yeah. on, a, on a leeward bank or whatever. Um, a, a little less um, precise with that, but I think these fish are – are migrating. I think these sheep's head are migrating. I think the, the tog are migrating. Maybe not so the black drum and, and slot reds. I believe those are going to be resonant fish. They're pouring out of the Cape Fear River, right. pouring out of our marshes. We talked the other day. You had a, I, I had fish appear when you had fish disappear. So right, right. I think I think that's something to. I mean, every everything's always something to consider. It's right? linked. It's yeah. all linked. Yeah, I mean, yeah for you, sure. You got to start putting those links together, and that's it, what makes you a better fisherman. Yeah, I think the people. I think when you think you know it all, you 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 don't know anything. That's right? what's so cool about yeah. it. These doors constantly opening. You're yeah, like, oh yeah. man, I'm just uh, it, the it's the only way of thinking. The, yeah, when you stop trying to link the puzzle together, go get a desk job, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, man, I think I think that's good. God, it seems like maybe we need to do some more podcast about this, but. Go like you can, I can. You man, can go for it. Everyone, I mean, everyone has their thing, man. I just would you get consider all, this year geeked out? Oh, niche. dude, yeah. I get silly about a sheep's head. Man. Yeah, I, that's I, awesome. There's nothing. There's nothing uh, like I love sight casting redfish. Yeah. I I love feeling that thump of a big trout. But there's something about just ripping into a sheep's head and getting <laughs> you dragged. Love. Oh man, dude. It's, awesome. And they're they're also I would say maybe not lethar like redfish and other fish that normally will rip drag in the summertime or spring or whatever get a little bit lethargic this time of year and i think it's the opposite for a really? man they, they like will rip yeah man they That's will sweet. rip your arms off trying to get you in that back in that structure man for heck sure yeah heck yeah well guys thanks for listening to this podcast again i'm going to link zane's information in the podcast uh show notes as well as on, on all the on the description for the youtube video um, we're actually going to uh, pop off of here, but keep recording a little bit uh, of extra content for Patreon. So if y'all do want to continue to hear from, from Zane, just hop over there um, and, and it would be much appreciated. But man, thank you so much for, for taking the time to do this. And Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, for sure. And we'll, y'all, this won't be the last y'all see of him and, and we'll see y'all soon. Later.